Hi, everybody. Welcome to Critical Thinking. I'm Dr. Robert Fudge, and I'll be your instructor for the semester. I'm sorry that we're starting the semester this way, but with the Linguist Hall um, dedication today, we're not going to be able to hold class. So um, instead, I'm going to introduce the course to you with this video. Uh, a couple things about the course. First of all, you should be aware that critical thinking, while it is a philosophy class, isn't a traditional philosophy class. So in other words, we're not going to be looking at arguments for whether God exists or whether we have free will or anything like that. Rather, critical thinking is a skills class. So in critical thinking, the subject matter is arguments and explanations. Specifically, what we're going to be looking at is how to identify, represent, and ultimately and most importantly, how to evaluate both arguments and explanations. Second thing to note about this class is that it's being taught in flipped modality. Some of you might have taken a flipped course um, previously. What this means is that the course time, or the in-class time, is really devoted to uh, problem solving. So instead of working homework problems outside of class, we're going to be doing all the homework in class. The way it's going to work then is that I'll, um, we'll, we'll be looking at the assignments list shortly, but you'll have some reading assignments uh, and some formative assessment quizzes to take outside of class. Then when we come to class, you're going to be asking any questions that you have about the material, and then the rest of the time is going to be spent um, working problems. The reason that we teach certain classes in flip mode is that research shows that students perform much better uh, learning this way. That's been my experience. I've taught um, critical thinking in a traditional face-to-face -face format where I come and I do lecturing and then students go and they um, do the homework at home and then they come back and we go over some of the homework and students ask questions and so on. I've done that for many years. Um, I've also taught the class online. And then a few years ago, I started teaching the class in flipped mode. And what I found is that students um, who, t who take it in flipped mode perform around 7% better than those in the traditional face-to-face -face mode and about 15% um, better, well, 10 to 15% better than those who take it online. So it's a really effective way to learn the material. But what this means is that you're going to be um, engaging with others a lot. Uh, you need to be prepared to discuss a lot and to interact with both your fellow classmates and with me. If that makes you uncomfortable, then this might not be the course for you. OK, so let's go ahead and turn to the syllabus. So what we're looking at here, then, um, is the syllabus for this semester. Uh, specifically, we're looking at the student view and um, just a few things about me. My office is in room 140 here of Linquist Hall. Very excited to be in Linquist Hall now. Um, as you've probably already seen, it's a beautiful building. They did a wonderful job with the renovation. Uh, my phone is extension 7046 on campus, and my email is robertfudge at weber.edu. I'm going to be having office hours on Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 1030 until 1120, and by appointment. Now I take that and by appointment very seriously. I know that my office hours aren't always convenient for everybody, and if they're not for you, then feel free to make an appointment with me outside of them. Uh, so long as my schedule allows for it, I'm happy to meet with you at other times. OK, let's talk a little bit about uh, the textbook. So if you've been to the bookstore, you've seen that um, it says that there's not a required text. Well, that isn't quite true. As you'll see, there is a required text, and it's entitled The Art and Science of Critical Thinking. It's available online through the University Bookstore's digital textbook system, Redshelf. You can access the book uh, here by clicking uh, right here on this link, and you can purchase it there. The textbook costs $40, and all proceeds from the sale of the text are used to enhance university programs and offerings. So even though I wrote the text, I don't uh, gain a red cent from it. Now the reason that I have the bookstore say that there's not a required text is that once you've purchased this textbook, you cannot return it. It's a digital text, you've purchased it, that's it. Now, um, some of you might not be quite sure whether you want to stay in the course or not. For that reason, I've given you uh, a link to the introduction and the first chapter of the book under the assignments list down here. Here we go at the bottom of the syllabus. Okay. So that'll give you a couple weeks uh, to decide 
whether you want to stay in the class, and it will give you that time then to make a final decision about purchasing the, re the non-returnable full text. Okay. So again, um, I have the bookstore say that there's not a required text so that students don't purchase the text and then decide perhaps even before the semester starts that they don't want to be in the class and then they find, oh, they can't return the text. Okay. So this helps get around that problem. All right. Um, secondly, announcements. I will periodically post announcements over Canvas. And so you should really set your notification settings on Canvas uh, announcements to ASAP. You can do that by clicking on uh, the account button right up here in the upper left hand corner of the screen. And then you can choose notifications and uh, do your settings that way. If you have any uh, requirements for technical assistance, you can contact the Computing Support Help Desk here at the university by calling extension 7777 or by emailing csupport at weber.edu, or you can go into uh, Lampros Hall. They have a help desk there. Right. If you have problems with Canvas, you can contact WSU online at extension 6499 or by emailing them. And if uh, you have problems with KyTester support, and KyTester is the uh, program that's used for taking exams, then you can call extension 6477. I don't think anybody ever has an issue with that, but I include that on there just in case. Okay, we've talked about the textbook. Uh, course description, it's an introduction to informal logic, fo focusing on issues of logical form, standards of good and bad reasoning, and argumentative writing. So, informal logic. Um, within the discipline of logic, we make a distinction between informal logic, which is also called critical thinking, and formal logic, which is also called deductive logic. Formal or deductive logic is very mathematical. You're doing uh, logic proofs in formal logic classes. But that's not the case with critical thinking. In critical thinking, we're very much concerned with ordinary language arguments. Okay. So um, while we will look a little bit at uh, symbolizing arguments in the final chapter that we'll be covering, uh, that will not be the focus of this class. Okay. Uh, course objectives to improve one's critical thinking and writing skills in the context of assessing and justifying argumentative claims. And then um, I list all of the course learning outcomes and the gen ed learning outcomes. Uh, I will let you read through those on your own. I don't think we need to cover those here. Okay, next we have the requirements. So first of all, reading assignments and lectures. Each assignment has associated with it at least one textbook section to be read with an accompanying video lecture. So again, if we go down here and look at the assignments list, um, you'll see that for Wednesday, uh, you have something to complete prior to class. You are to read the introduction and section one, uh, I'm sorry, section 1.1 of the text, which is entitled Identifying Arguments, and then watch an accompanying video lecture. Now, there's a couple ways to access the lecture. You'll see that I have a link here, and if you click it, it will take you to a YouTube video. Um, hopefully, once you've purchased the text, um, Red Shelf right now is in the process of linking uh, my videos directly within the text. So um, if we let's go ahead and look at the text for a second. I have it pulled up here. Uh, I'm going to put this in full screen mode. Okay. All right. So, here we've got the textbook, The Art and Science of Critical Thinking. This is in uh, the Red Shelf uh, application. So once you've created, created an account and purchased the text, this is what it will look like when you pull it up. Okay, so uh, we've got a table of contents here. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can make annotations and notes in the text. Um, you can play around with that a lot. You can place bookmarks in your text. Um, there's a lot of fun stuff that you can do using uh, the Red Shelf application. But we're going to look at uh, the table of contents. And you'll see that there are nine chapters plus a glossary. Uh, in this class, we're going to be covering the first seven chapters. So let's go ahead and um, click the arrow here, open this up. And we'll see that chapter one has three sections. First one on identifying arguments, one on classifying arguments, and one on implicit premises and conclusions. So let's go ahead and go to the first section, Identifying Arguments. And you'll see um, at the beginning of the section, you've got this little box here that says Lecture Video. 
Now this is where Redshelf is going to be putting a link so that when you click it, it will automatically open up my lecture on YouTube. Okay. And whoops. And let's go ahead and close the table of contents. Okay. Now let's see, this is a little big. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. Okay. You can use these arrows up here to, to navigate through the text. Okay. So you'll be reading uh, the section. I'm going to go back to the first page. And then you're going to watch my video, okay. my lecture. OK, next, you'll see that there's going to be a quiz that's due. Um, in this case, uh, by 11.59 PM on Sunday, January 13th. Now this is unusual. Uh, you'll see that the first two quizzes, quiz one here and quiz two, these are both due at the very end of the day on uh, Sunday, January 13th. The rest of the quizzes are going to be due before class. Okay? So uh, let's see, our class this semester begins at, um, oh gosh, what time? 12.30, right? So those quizzes are going to be closing at 12.29 p.m. Okay, so you have to get it done before then. The purpose of the quizzes is to, is to help you prepare for class. So there's really no point in taking the quizzes afterwards. And then it talks about what we're going to be doing in the class. So we'll begin by going over any questions on the assigned lecture and readings, uh, and then we'll uh, be doing group work. Then Friday, uh, you're going to be reading the second section, section 1.2, watching an accompanying video lecture. You'll have another quiz, and we're going to be uh, doing some more group work on both uh, exercise set 1.1 and 1.2. So again, um, I'm going to go back to the textbook here. I'm, I'm going to go to the end of uh, the first section. And you'll see exercise set 1.1. This is what we're going to be working on in class. Okay? So you're not going to have to be working on these exercise sets outside of class. Um, and furthermore, you'll never turn in these exercise sets. These are used just to help you learn the material. Okay? So that's what we're going to be spending most of our class time doing is working through those exercise sets. All right. Um, so that's the first part, reading assignments and lectures. Because this is a flipped class, Attendance is essential. Okay? So the attendance is worth 70 points in this class. What this means is that you will earn two points for every class period that you are present. I will not take attendance during the first week of the semester or on the exam review days. Okay? The reason that I'm not taking attendance during the first week is that there are people still adding. And that's the reason that quizzes one and two aren't due until the end of the day on uh, Sunday after the first week. Okay? If they were due before class and then somebody adds um, after that, then it's just a real pain to continue opening up quizzes for them. So um, they're just due for everybody at the end of that first week. OK, next we've got the assessment quizzes. Uh, as you've already seen, uh, after you've done your uh, reading and watched the lecture video, then you'll take uh, an assessment quiz. Each of these quizzes consists of five questions. They're easy. Okay? They're open book and open note. Uh, they're administered here over Canvas. You just click on the link that I have. And they can be taken from any computer location. Uh, you're welcome to complete the quizzes together. right? You can do them in groups or with somebody else. Because each of them is only worth um, approximately 8 tenths of a percent of your final grade, I do not allow you to make them up. However, at the end of the semester, I will drop your lowest score. So there are um, 19 of them. Uh, I count 18 of them. And that's uh, your 90 points, 18 times uh, 5 points each. All right, next we have a signature assignment worth 50 points. I'm sure you're all familiar with the Gen Ed uh, renewal efforts that we have been implementing here at Weber State. Um, all Gen Ed classes are required to incorporate a big question and a signature assignment. The big question for this class is, what is the relevance of critical thinking to your discipline or my discipline? The signature assignment will involve interviewing somebody in your discipline, whether it be a professor or somebody out in the field, um, and writing a three to four page summary and analysis of the interview. 
Now, I give you the interview questions um, on the assignment itself. So you just have to go out, interview them, uh, record their responses, and then write a summary um, at the end. I'll be making this available um, immediately following exam three. So it's not something that you're going to have to worry about for a while. And finally, we have four exams administered during the semester. Okay. The final exam is not cumulative. These exams will be taken at the Weber State Testing Centers, and you'll see that I include a link here to the testing centers. I'm going to click on that real quick. You'll see that all the testing centers are listed here. You can click on all of the tabs here, and it tells you when um, the testing centers are open. Okay. It's your responsibility to know when they're open. Okay. Um, if you miss uh, an exam because you go too late on the last day, well, I'm sorry, you can't make that up. Okay. I make that point down here. It's your responsibility to know when they're open, um, and I will not give makeups for running out of time at the end of a testing day or for showing up uh, after closing time on the final day of your exams. Exceptions, of course, are um, when emergencies come up. So if there is some sort of emergency that prevents you from being able to take an exam, contact me as soon as possible. We can make alternate arrangements. Um, okay, so for each of the exams, you're allowed two full pages of notes. That's uh, two pages front and back for a total of four sides that you can take uh, in with you. They can be printed, they can be typed, I don't care. The testing center collects and keeps notes after you finish your exams, so if you want to uh, keep a copy for yourself, uh, you should make the copy ahead of time. If you live outside of the testing service area, that is outside of Weber, Davis, or Morgan counties, then you can request to set up a proctor to administer the exam. You have to do this early in the semester rather than waiting until the last minute. And again, I have a link uh, here for how to do that. I'm guessing that 99% of you uh, will not worry about that. You'll just take the exam in one of the testing centers. Okay, how your final grade will be determined. There will be 610 total points possible during the semester, uh, and your final grade will be based on this scale. Okay. Some important dates. Most of these apply to all of your classes. So the last day to drop any of your classes without a W appearing on your transcript will be Monday, January 28th. So you've got uh, three weeks to make a decision whether to stay in the class. Last day to drop classes to, uh, with a W on your transcript or to select credit, no credit, or audit is Tuesday, March 26th. Uh, we are not going to have class on Friday, January 18th because I'm going to be traveling to a conference. Uh, Martin Luther King Day is the very following Monday, January 21st, so basically you're getting a four-day weekend from our class. Uh, President's Day is on Monday, February 18th. We have no classes at the university on that day. Spring break is uh, March 4th through March 8th. And then the last day of classes is Monday, April 22nd. Remember, in the spring, we always end on a Monday. OK, absence policy, if there are uh, circumstances that require you to miss a significant portion of the semester, uh, please contact me so we can uh, work things out. OK, the policy regarding academic dishonesty is fairly straightforward. Uh, you can't plagiarize. For our purposes, that means that all of your exams must be completed on your own. Again, you're welcome to work together on the quizzes. If you're found guilty of cheating or plagiarizing, um, then you are uh, be subject to failure of a specific assignment or, in more serious cases, failure of, an entire, of the entire course. Uh, furthermore, anybody who is caught um, uh, committing uh, plagiarism, uh, I'm required to report their names to the Dean of Students Office. If anything requires the university to close for any significant amount of time, uh, we will be moving the course here to Canvas, so make sure to check back here. The university uh, has an emergency system called Code Purple, and that's a good way to be alerted to any campus closures, and I encourage you to sign up for it. And finally, if you have um, any need for special accommodations, contact the um, Office of Services for Students with Disabilities in room 181 of the Student Services Center. Uh, they can provide course materials, including the syllabus and alternative formats upon request. Speaking of which, one thing I should have noted, um, with my videos, all of the videos are closed captioned. Okay? 
So if you like closed captioning, make sure that you have the closed caption option turned on on YouTube. Um, if you don't like closed captioning, you can turn it off. And finally, then we have the assignments list. So you'll see, I'm just going to scan through this quickly. Uh, we've got, let's see, three, four, we have four weeks of material that we're going to be working through. And then your first exam is going to be available from Friday, February 1st through Sunday, February 3rd. The Library Testing Center is open on Sundays, and I've had students um, ask me in the past if they can take their exams on Sundays, so um, I do have that option available to you. Uh, then we have, whoops, have a few more weeks of material. Exam 2 will be available Friday, February 22nd through Sunday, February 24th. The third exam will be available Monday, March 25th through Wednesday, March 27th. And then the final exam will be held, I shouldn't call it a final exam, the fourth exam will be held during the final exam period. So it'll be available from Tuesday, April 23rd through Thursday, April 25th. All right, so hopefully that gives you a good overview of the course. Um, do ask any questions that you have about it when we meet on Wednesday, and we'll see you then.